right, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a lot of me talking to you, but today we are going to talk about the perfect club fitting, the things you should be looking for when you are going through your club fitting. So let's start with the driver fitting. All right, so when we talk driver, there's gonna be a couple of things that we really wanna look for. And the first thing we wanna look for when it comes to our driver numbers is simply going to be ball speed. All right, let's go back and take a look at this track man right here. And you will see down on the bottom row, the fourth from the end, it'll say ball speed and it's 152.3 now. Ball speed is important when you're getting fit for your driver for a pretty simple reason. And when it comes to the driver, ball speed is king. I mean, the faster the ball speed, the greater the distance. Are there other factors? Absolutely. But the general rule is ball speed equals distance. So one thing I always like to do when I am testing drivers, when I'm going through uh, and looking at purchasing a new driver, I really look at, does this increase my ball speed? Because if it increases my ball speed, I can start to mess with spin, with loft. I can start to mess with launch angle, with loft. Shaft kind of plays a role in there as well. So I always tend to look at ball speed first and foremost when it comes to getting a new driver. And once I look at ball speed, the next thing I want to look at is actually going to be smash factor. All right, so you're probably sitting there going, what is smash factor? And if you actually look on this chart, you'll see it over uh, bottom right, three from the uh, right hand side, it'll say smash fact 1.52, which is unusually high for a driver it actually goes over kind of what the uh, limit used to be um, but what smash factor is is it ties heavily into ball speed so um, you may see it as efficiency when you go in to do your fitting things like that but it's a pretty simple equation it's ball speed divided by your swing speed now you want that to be as high as possible and the general rule is that the maximum number you can see here is probably 1.5 now as you can see this person uh, who did this, Mr. Stickney, uh, got to a 1.52, which means he probably caught it out on a toe. If you get over 1.5, tends to mean that there is something fishy going on with the reading, but smash factor plays a large role because that can really tell us if we're being efficient in hitting the ball out of the middle. When I was at the PGA show last year, one of the key things that Callaway talked about in their fitting process that they talked about a lot was actually smash factor and how if it's dipping too low, um, they know that the, the person swinging isn't actually making solid contact with the ball. What they're doing is they are actually not hitting it very well. They're kind of hitting it out of the, uh, the heel, maybe the toes, something like that. And so that's the first thing they look at is going to be the smash factor. I look at ball speed a little bit more because I know if I'm hitting it solid or not, but smash factor, a huge thing. All right. So after smash factor i tend to look at launch and spin so let's dive into that a little bit so before we get going into how launch and spin can actually affect your uh affect your driver fitting and things like that let's actually talk about what launch angle is it's pretty simple golf tech breaks it down here for you um in a very crude looking drawing when you really look at it this may have been done in microsoft paint but it proves the, it, it shows the, the point uh, perfectly clear. So uh, it's the angle between the ground and the golf ball, the middle of the golf ball, when it launches from your club. So think about um, when you're watering your yard. If you're trying to reach that back corner of the yard and you don't want to go walk where you've already watered or you're trying to reach kind of those hard to get plants kind of back in the back of the landscaping and you kind of have to arc it a little bit if you put it down too low it's not going to reach those plants it's going to kind of die out on you and uh, go go into the ground before you want it to and if you and if you have it set too high the water shoots straight up and doesn't really reach those back in the back those plants in the back so what you got to do is you got to kind of arc it little bit kind of get the perfect angle to get it going that way and so when you're going through your driver fitting that's kind of what we're trying to do here as well what we want to do is we want to make sure you're launching it at the right angle if it's too low it's not going to maximize your carry you're not going to clear that bunker it's going to roll a little bit more which may be nice especially here in texas uh, we dry out during the summer but you want to make sure you can kind of carry some of these uh, hazards, a bunker, something like that. And if you go too high, you're going to spend way too much of your 
your energy launching and putting the ball up into the air so you don't maximize that carry that way either. So um, launch angle plays a huge role, but we tie it in with spin quite often. And how those two things work together is very important. The key to long drives typically is high launch, low spin. If you can get the right launch and you can get a spin rate that keeps the ball in the air but doesn't spin it too much where you balloon but doesn't spin it so less that it just kind of knuckles in the sky and just falls out of the sky. You need that backspin to keep the ball up in the air. So there's a fine line and it really depends on your swing speed to tell you the conditions you really should be looking for. So if you're at the 90 mile an hour swing speed, you want your launch angle to be anywhere between 11 to 14 with anywhere between 2000 to 2500 uh, RPM of spin. And if you want to go uh, 100 miles an hour, which is what a lot of uh, men do, it's going to be a launch angle of 12, spin right around 2,000, maybe somewhere uh, 21, 2200, and then at 105 and higher, launch angle around 10 to 12, and then you kind of want to be right at that 2,000 number. Anything higher, what tends to happen is you start to balloon the ball, especially with that kind of speed, and if you go much lower than that, you're going to get a ton of run, but you're going to see a lot of that knuckle. So right around the 2000 is great for those higher swing speeds. All right, and let's talk about the final thing that I tend to look for on my driver fittings, and that is going to be our carry distance. So why do I look at carry distance? Well, it's pretty simple. I look at carry distance because that is how far the club actually goes. And then roll is very dependent on conditions out on the course that day. So think about it this way. If you are playing a wet, muddy course, uh, the carry distance is not going to be very important, or the carry distance is going to be very important. If you are playing on a dry course, you want to make sure you maximize that carry, but roll is going to be really important. And you don't know if you are walking into a sim that is optimized to maximize roll, right? You could set up the fairways there to run out and give you maximum amounts of roll. And you just want to make sure that you are looking at carry distance. Think about the bunkers at your at your home course or the course you play the most. Think about those carry distances to get over those bunkers. If you're falling short of them and you want to carry it from here on, you really want to optimize that carry distance. Sure, you may hit it further if it's on the ground a little bit more, but overall, that's not exactly what you're looking for. You want to maximize the carry distance. That also gives you a good amount of roll. But carry distance is the thing that I look at first and foremost. That's going to tell me if I have the right launch and spin conditions. That's going to tell me if I have the right shaft. That's going to tell me pretty much everything that I'm looking for is going to be that carry distance. So look at that carry distance and see what it is and base your results off of that. All right, so we've spent some time looking at this fitting here uh, with Tom Stickney or whoever that is. Back in 2013, he was getting these kind of numbers. So let's actually take a look and see what I see in this fitting and what you could be also looking for in your fitting as well. So first thing I noticed is that uh, smash factor of a 1.52, probably catching that out. High toe, that is a known flaw with TrackMan a little bit um, that that high toe shot tends to read a little bit higher uh, just because of the way the radar works. But that tells me this guy is maximizing his, his uh, club fitting, right? He's getting that 1.52 in reality. If he's down to a 1.48, something like that, he's definitely hitting it out of the middle of the face. The club head speed of 100.2 is perfectly fine. Launch angle of 16 uh, with a spin rate of 22. I don't love that launch angle. Um, maybe, Maybe a tiny bit high, um, probably three, four degrees high, um, but his spin rate is pretty good, right? His spin rate's at 2,200. I kind of like that spin rate. I wonder if you could maybe go with something that is going to be just a little bit lower spin, lower launching head, maybe go down in loft. Um, you could try to change that a little bit with the shaft, maybe knock down 200 RPMs of spin and maybe a degree or two of launch angle that may get you up a little bit higher on your carry distance carry distance of 257.8 total of 278.1 gotta be honest with you that's 
pretty good there uh, for a hundred mile an hour club head speed. If you're carrying it 258, hard hard to hate that. Face the path. Uh, this guy's going to be hitting a draw with that. Everything looks good on this fitting. If this were my fitting and I walked out with this, I'd be pretty happy. Um, like I said, maybe want to lower the uh, spin and the launch angle just a little bit. Maybe you go down a degree, maybe close that, uh, close that club face with, um, with your, with your adapter sleeve, maybe lower the loft by half a degree, a degree, something like that. And you could possibly see success there, but overall this club fitting is absolutely brilliant. Good job to the fitter who did this. And, uh, Tom Stickney has probably got a new driver by now, but hopefully he is doing something that's at this kind of uh, level of performance with it. So that's what I look for when I look for a driver fitting. I look for that uh, ball speed, the smash factor, or efficiency, launch and spin, uh, carry distance. So now that we've done drivers, let's go ahead and uh, talk about that brand new set of irons you're going to get this year. Iron fittings are my absolute favorite things to fit for. I love, love, love doing iron fittings. And the reason why I love doing iron fittings so much is there's just so much you can change and so much you can do to them. It's a very complex puzzle and one that isn't the easiest to master. And when you get a good iron fitting, you know it and it can completely change your game. So let's go through what I like to look for when I do my iron fittings. So the first thing to notice with this screen is that it looks different than the last one. And that's because the first one was on TrackMan. This one was on uh, Foresight GC Quad. So it's going to look a little bit different. But these are probably the two simulators and launch monitors that you're going to be using. So I wanted to give you a good idea of what they both look like. So the first thing, like I said, that I look for is launch and spin when it comes to irons. Now, launch angle is going to change depending on the iron that you're hitting technically if you're a pro, they all kind of launch at the same angle, which is kind of crazy to think about, but the spin is going to change quite a bit. Now, as I said with driver, high launch, low spin equals maximum distance. And a lot of irons nowadays are designed to launch high and spin fairly low. And so the number I always look for when I'm looking for my, for my spin number is going to be the number on the bottom of the club minus a thousand. So, or times a thousand and then minus a thousand. So to clarify that, if you're hitting a seven iron, you times the seven by a thousand to get 7,000. Then you want to subtract a thousand off of that to get that 6,000 number, which is kind of the spin number you're looking to hit. Why is that important? Well, you want the spin so that it stays in the air, it maintains its flight. And then when it hits the ground, it kind of stops and doesn't roll through the back of the green. Now, there is another metric that's certainly going to help with that, and that's the next most important metric that I look for when I am looking to do an iron fitting. That's right, we are going to talk about descent angle now. This is the angle that the ball descends into the green. Pretty easy to think about that, right? But why does that matter? Well, it matters if it comes in too low. There's a good chance that ball's going to roll off the back of the green and if it's too high then you're going to be losing a lot of distance and the wind's going to really affect what you're doing things like that so you want to make sure that it really falls into this right area and that area for me and from what i've learned from a lot of different uh, fitters and experts is that that number is somewhere between 45 and 50 degrees um, 45 50 degrees means the ball is launching and spinning at the right rate to get it to stop on the green and that's really important um, if you're somebody who uh, maybe doesn't do a very good job of getting the ball in the air and you like to roll it up onto the green, maybe this is a little less important for you. But for most people, 45 to 50 degrees, that's going to be where you're optimizing your distance and optimizing your control. With driver, it's a little bit different because you just want maximum distance and then if you can keep it on the fairway, that's going to be great. But with this descent angle, you really want it, and with your irons, you really want it to be able to hold those greens. Whereas with driver, you don't care if it holds the uh, holds holds the uh, middle of the fairway. It can roll out a little bit as much as you want it to. So the way you kind of figure out your descent angle is, one, it will say it, right? The, the screen will tell you what the descent angle is. But if your spin is too low, it's... Uh, 
not necessarily the end of the world if you're launching it high enough. So that's why I say launch and spin kind of go together, right? If your launch is higher than you might like, but your spin is lower and your descent angle falls within the parameters, you got a pretty good iron there. It's probably going to go a long ways and still hold those greens. Um, I remember being in a simulator uh, with our director of marketing when I was in the shaft industry and we were in, uh, we were in the simulator hitting on GC quad and he had a uh, ping I 500 iron and he had done a little bit of changes to it. He put in his preferred shaft and things like that in it and he was hitting it. And I just remember going, dude, you were hitting that with no spin. And he goes, yeah, but look at that descent angle. And he goes, it's going to hold a green. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, it's landing at 45 degrees. It's going to hold that green no matter how low the spin is. In fact, um, if I wanted to go a little crazy, I could maybe even loft this down just or loft it uh, stronger and maybe get a little bit more distance. And then it's still probably going to be pretty close on that descent angle. And I was like, that's really interesting. And I didn't really, I never really thought much of descent angle before that. And he kind of opened my eyes to it. And now it's something that I look for in every iron fitting that I go through. If I am uh, testing my irons, if I'm testing new irons, that's really something that I look for. A friend of mine, he um, was looking at new irons and that's something I told him to look for. And he did. And his irons have been pretty good for him. So um, it's definitely something to look for and to pay attention to because it's pretty easy with these new irons that uh, are very low spinning to just get in there and you just start crushing it. And with lofts jacked up the way that they are, their clubs are getting stronger and stronger lofted. And it's easy to get in there and just see that you hit your seven iron 180 yards compared to the 150 you have been hitting it and just get really excited. But if you actually look at that descent angle, your descent angle is at like 39. You're not holding the green and it's rolling out everywhere. Great off the tee box. Wonderful off the tee box. Terrible if you're actually playing golf. And while distance is fun, it's great to be on the simulator and hit the ball as far as you can. You really care about your distance control and if you're going to be able to hold those greens. So pay attention to your descent angle. You can get as much distance as you want as long as your descent angle is over 45 or at least really close to it. Currently, my 7-iron is going in at 44 and a half degrees. That's pretty close. I'll take that. I'm getting pretty good distance with it. I'm hitting a little bit more of a draw, so the face is a little bit closed, getting a little bit lower launch, but overall, 44 and a half, it's not too bad. It's not too bad of a result there. So descent angle is something that a lot of people overlook. Most people don't pay attention to it. They look at launch and spin, and they want to hit those numbers. And if you're hitting those numbers, that's great. But if your descent angle is too high or too low, you're either going to lose distance or you're going to uh, run it through the greens, and then you better be good at chipping. So descent angle is super important in what you're doing. Right, so waiting until last to bring up the lie angle is making a former co-worker of mine who was the head club fitter cry a little bit. If uh, he ever saw this, he'd be going, that should be number one. He always started with lie angle and it's pretty easy to see why we talked about how you're going to maximize your distance, how you're going to maximize that descent angle. But really with irons, one of the big things we're looking for is going to be direction, right? You want to make sure that that ball is going straight and the lie angle is probably the most important way to do this. One of the things that kind of imp that stuck with me um, watching my former coworker um, do fittings was he grabbed a fitting head and he grabbed one that was three degrees upright and then he grabbed one that was uh, three degrees flat and he grabbed one that was standard. And he did this test and there was probably a 50 yard discrepancy between the three degrees upright and the three degrees flat. It was insane to actually see. So um, just something that has always stuck with me is how important lie angle is. Now, one thing I want you to do is definitely test your lie angle, right? If you're hitting the ball out to the uh, out to the right, maybe raise that uh, up, uh, raise that just a little bit. Uh, get yourself in a more upright lie. If you're leaking it out to the left, maybe flatten your lie a little bit. Look where you're impacting the ball. Right. If you are hitting it out on the toe, your club path determines a lot of that. Right. But your ball flight, um, your your if you're hitting it out on the toe, 
maybe you need to uh, raise that uh, a little bit, get, put yourself in a more upright lie and get that heel up a little bit, and maybe you'll start to center that shot a little bit more. So the the lie angle is a super, super, super important thing to pay attention to in your fitting. And one thing I want you to do is that if you see your fitter come out and he says he's going to test you for your lie angle, and then he puts down a lie board and he puts a piece of tape on the bottom of that club, I want you to grab your stuff and I want you to just politely walk out of there because that guy doesn't know what he's doing. You want to fit dynamically for just about everything that you do in terms of lie angle. Now, is it always perfect to go ball fit or ball flight? Not always, but it's much better than just using a board. Because let me tell you, the point of the board is to see which part of the club is hitting the ball or the ground first. So if it's your heel, if it's your toe, they're going to adjust it based on that. But here's the thing. I don't care about making pretty divots. I make about I care about making pretty golf shots. And if everything I'm hitting is leaking out to the right, then why would I want to go toe down if it says that um, that's what the lie board says? Why would I want to add? Why would I want to flatten out my lie? Well, static measurement, if I measure my wrist to floor and my height and all that, that gives me a good place to start. But for instance, me, if I do my fitting through ping and I use their, their color-coded chart and I use the static measurements, what ends up happening is they say I should be in a two-degree flat lie. Problem with that is my miss is outright. So when I go two degrees flat, guess what happens? I start flaring balls outright. And that's a ball flight I hate to see. So I play one degree flat because that's how I get good turf interaction and it's how I get the best ball flight for me. So don't use a lie board. Lie boards lie. It's a common thing that people have said in club fitting for a very long time. So I want you to really pay attention to your lie angles and how the club feels and the differences in your ball flight when you try different lie angles. All right, so let's talk about some final tips that I can give you to be successful at your fitting. We talked about all the numbers, but what about some of the other things that can just kind of make you successful? Well, the first one, you can see it right there, is bring your own clubs, right? If you're going in for a driver fitting, bring in your current driver. If you're going in for an iron fitting, bring your current iron, wedges, all that. Bring it in. Bring it in to compare because you never know. It could just be a simple fix, a couple of... Uh, Adapter sleeve changes, moving a weight around, something like that could give you a massive amount of improvement. So bring your own club in. Also, you never know how well you're hitting your clubs that day, right? Maybe you go in there and you're just absolutely smoking driver. I'll tell you, this happened to me. About a week ago, I was looking at a new three wood, not because I needed one, but because I was just kind of in a mood where I wanted to buy some golf clubs. But I went in and I was just absolutely killing Last year's Cobra 3-Wood, I was absolutely smoking it, just ripping it. Just didn't think I could hit a 3-Wood better than I was hitting that one. And then right before I bought it, I actually went out and grabbed mine. And I was going to trade it in, and the trade value wasn't quite exactly what I wanted for it, but I understood uh, kind of what the deal was there. So I was like, you know what, let's go hit this one compared to the Cobra. And I did, and let me tell you guys, I was smoking three wood that day. I was absolutely crushing my three wood and I was hitting my current three wood better than I was hitting the Cobra. Had I not grabbed my current three wood out of the, out of the car, what would have happened? I would have bought a Cobra three wood. I would have been happy with it, but I would have wasted about 70 bucks. And let me tell you, I'm not in the business of wasting 70 bucks. Anyone who's followed this channel for any amount of time knows that if you've been on my TikTok, you know that I can make 70 bucks go a pretty long way. In fact, I got some stuff sitting behind me that cost me 40 and it's a dozen golf balls and two gloves. Pretty sweet. I'd rather spend it on golf balls and gloves than a club that isn't going to make my game any better. So bring your own club. Make sure you're comparing your current, your possible new driver to your current stuff. You want to make sure that you're comparing them equally. My second tip is don't wear yourself out. A lot of times we get in these bays and we get excited because we're spending all this money to, to get 
fit for a club, something a lot of us have never really done before. And we get in there and we start swinging all out. We start tiring ourselves out. And then halfway through our fitting, we're just beat. We're not going to get any more solid swings out of it. And there's still some combinations and we haven't found that perfect fit yet. There's still some combinations yet to try. So take it slow, bring some water, relax, and just enjoy the process and don't wear yourself out. My third tip is going to be to trust your fitter. Let me tell you guys, I, again, was in the business for a while and I saw this happen more times than you think, right? Somebody comes in and they're dead set on getting the tailor-made driver. So they say, hey, I want to get fit for a driver. I really want to hit the tailor-made. And then they go in and maybe they hit the ping better. Maybe they just hit the ping G40 three yards further and with a better dispersion, but they have their mindset on that, on that, uh, on that tailor-made. So they walk out with the tailor-made and then guess what happens? Two weeks later, they're back in and they're going, Hey, can I actually order that ping now? And now you've ordered the tailor-made and the ping. You got to sell the tailor-made, maybe trade it in. Maybe you can get the 90 day guarantee on it, something like that. But you're going to have to, uh, buy a new driver again. Trust your fitter. Trust that fitter. They have spent a lot of time going through it and they, they know what they're talking about. And the fourth thing to kind of think about is going to be, uh, don't lie to your fitter. If I had a dollar for every time that somebody came in and they said, Oh, I, I hit the ball 300 and then they get on the, they get on the launch monitor and they're carrying the ball 230, and they're telling us that our launch monitor is wrong or something like that. It's probably not the launch monitor. You probably don't hit it as far as you think you do. So um, swallow the ego a little bit. Tell the fitter what's happening. The fitter can't fix what they don't know is broken. If you actually want more distance, but you go in and you tell everybody, oh, I, I, I want a little bit more control and a little bit more distance. Well, we're going to try to get you both, but here's the thing. If you strictly want distance and you're pretty good with control, then tell us that. Say, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. I'm currently hitting 240 on my course. There's a bunker that is a 245 carry. And if I can carry that, it's going to completely change how I play that hole. Perfect. Let's find you something that's going to carry at least 245 and get you over that bunker. It's something that fitters try to do. We want to help you accomplish your goals. Fitters want to help you accomplish your goals. So don't lie to them. They're your partner. They're your teammate in this.